Hey guys, I just got into Singapore. My hotel just showered, super jet lag. So I am going to put on a sheet mask. We use this one from the real barrier. Anyway, this trip to Singapore, which I've never been to, I've never been to Singapore, my first time. I'm here for the World uh, Congress of Dermatology. It's the longest travel I've ever done in my entire life. Flew from Minneapolis to San Francisco, San Francisco to Narita, Tokyo, and then Tokyo to Singapore. I mean, literally I left at 5 a.m. in the morning on Saturday and arrived here basically at 12 a.m. Monday morning, <laughs> Singapore time. So literally I have been traveling for a day and a half. I'm really exhausted and jet lag because right now it is like afternoon time in Minneapolis. So can't really sleep. So I thought since it's been so long of a flight, I would just pamper myself a little sheet mask and then try to get some rest today, later today. I'm gonna go to actually the the conference center register, or I should say not register, but check in. And then I think the real fun really starts tomorrow because that's where all my activities start. But there is a La Roche Posay event this evening. So I'm gonna try to rest up and go to that one. So I'll definitely take you all guys along with me during my trip here, here for the, you know, again, for the World Derm Congress, but um, I have some partnerships spawned, uh, with a few brands. And then my husband's actually gonna be joining me. I'm gonna do a little traveling without the kids for a week. So I think with, oh, with that, for that week, the highlight is really gonna be eating because he's been looking super forward to eating all the Michelin star uh, food stalls here. So definitely there'll be plenty of eating here in Singapore. So anyway, I'm gonna do this mask and then try to get some sleep and I'll see you guys hopefully in like seven to eight hours. Good morning. Look at this beautiful view. Good morning, it's around 9.30 a.m. Monday, July 3rd. I think I probably got like five hours of sleep this morning. I like went to bed around like almost 3 a.m. and got up around eight. Anyway, I just did my morning skincare routine, but really wanna show you guys this sunscreen that I'm gonna put on. I picked this up at the airport, at Narita Airport when I had my layover. And this is one that I've been wanting to try for the longest time, but it's always out of stock. This particular color on YesStyle. So so when I saw it at the airport, I was like, I need to get this. And it was really interesting because at the airport, they had quite a few selection of sunscreens that you can find on YesStyle, which is usually the storefront I get my Asian skincare products from, including a few that I actually have at home that I really love. But anyway, this is one that has a green tint and it has a hybrid filter, combination of chemical filters as well as zinc oxide. And the green tint will help to offset some redness. So maybe ideal for those that have more like irritation maybe rosacea prone skin. So it's definitely like a light cream, maybe even like a little gel cream texture, very lightweight. And you can see already, it's got a nice green tint. It is scented. It's got a like nice refreshing floral scent. So let's just see how it applies. I just rubbed it all in. in. And definitely initial thought is like, ooh, this is not like the traditional Korean sunscreen or even Japanese sunscreen that's not tinted that I'm used to. It does have a little bit of a white cast, but you know, with these sunscreens, you always want to give it a minute or two, let it kind of settle on your skin first before you judge. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna wait for a few minutes and then come back and I'll probably show you guys like the um the the look too in natural light. So I actually think it's not bad. It certainly has a little bit of a brightening property. It's got a semi-dewy finish, pretty lightweight, hydrating. The other thing I forgot to mention is this is waterproof, which is not the correct term to use in the US because we only have water resistant. There's really no true waterproof filters in Japan. You know, I'm not a formulator, a cosmetic formulator, and I can't speak to, you know, the things that are used in Japan. But at least in my mind, that means that this is gonna be more resistant to sweating, which is what I need here in the hot, humid weather in Singapore. So I'll keep you guys posted on, on the sunscreen throughout my week here. Oh my God, it is so hot and humid here. <laughs> I don't think I'm used to it. Anyway, I'm walking to the convention center right now to get my badge for conference. I'm a, the iconic Marina Bay Sand, going to a little event hosted by Laura's Pulse. It should be fun. Hopefully we'll see some familiar faces.
Good morning. This is my day three in Singapore. I really haven't had a chance to sit down with you guys to talk about what's been happening at the World Congress of Dermatology. It's just been a lot happening and then <laughs> I've been really jet lagged. So literally in the afternoon, I would take like a nap or two and then like go to bed at 11 o'clock and wake up at four. So it's been kind of crazy. But the first day I got there, saw a lot of friends, familiar faces, derm dermatology colleagues and went to the exhibit hall and mostly hung out with Sarah V. I hung out with the US team, the marketing team, as well as a uh, few dermatologists dermatologists, well-known dermatologists, including Dustin, Dr. Dustin Partella. And he actually was one of the hosts for CRV's uh, game. That is what kind of their activity is at the CRV booth this year. And so I participated in that and that was part of my collaboration with CRV. And then one of the more exciting things for me was I actually met up with the CRV China team. And so CRV is a brand that is growing in Asia and La Roche-Posay, Vichy, and CRV both have a small market in China in particular and I definitely have a red book count red book app I should say and I have a platform on there and really been just repurposing my American contents and translating into Chinese I do speak Mandarin myself and really have always wanted to work with the industry in China so it was really fun to connect with them and learn about just some of their challenges and the culture in China about you know how the general public views skincare and just the the differences as well as similarities that I see as a treating doctor as a dermatologist anyway so that was really fun and then what did I do in the afternoon I felt like I, I came back and napped <laughs> and then in the evening attended L'Oreal Imagine the Future event it was really interesting to learn about all the philanthropy that L'Oreal is doing when it comes to global dermatology access research funding projects that allow and mentor other dermatologists in areas of need and then yesterday Yesterday, I got up, um, I filmed some content with Cetaphil and Vichy, and then went out to lunch with the CRV China team. And really, like I said, learned in depth about just CRV, how the market is doing in China, and how the Chinese consumer views CRV and some of the challenges that they're facing. And then in the afternoon, I went out and got a massage, <laughs> got a foot massage. And then today, I'm up, ready to go to more lectures. And I actually want to get skincare um, products. So so I get so many PR packages at home. It's unbelievable. I really need to Marie Kondo my house from all the products that exist. So really nowadays, you know, as a dermatology resident, I would go and bring like an empty suitcase just so that way I can pack with all the products that usually we would get at the exhibit hall to bring home. Now I literally, when I see the exhibit hall, I'm overwhelmed. Like I do not want anything. However, being that this is the World Congress, there are products out there um, that they're giving out that is not available in the US and I really want to try in particular I think Cetaphil is giving out this brightening sheet mask which you cannot find in America and it's the brightening line that have more gentle um, brightening ingredients like niacinamide and polyhydroxy acid and so I heard that they're giving away a sheet mask so I really want to try that and then Eucerin has a new line of acne treatments including not only treatment, but I think sunscreen. So I'm gonna rock around and just see what other brands are out there. I think there are a lot of Asian brands that are not uh, commonly seen in, in America. And so I'm really curious to check that out. I'm also meeting some friends for coffee. I may also be filming some content with some of my derm friends. And that's the other thing too. I think one of the my favorite parts, my one of my most favorite parts of the conference is really just meeting you know colleagues and friends that I've met on social media some of them meeting for the first time even though I feel like their sisters and their brothers like I've known them for a long time but really meeting in person for the first time good morning guys so today's Friday and tomorrow is legitimately the last day of the World Congress of Dermatology and today the exhibit hall closes so it's been really fun there's definitely a lot more people here I think orders of like thousands of dermatologists from across the world attend this conference but before I head off this morning I want to show you guys things that I grabbed that I snagged from the exhibit hall these are the products that I really wanted to try first of all this is really not new but I can't say no to SK2 facial essence because a full-size bottle is like $200 so this one is just because it's so luxurious I had to get so first of all let's talk about a couple products from Cetaphil I was told yesterday this is a product that is 
only specifically formulated for the Chinese audience. So in China, sensitive skin, irritated skin is really, really a, a major concern. And I believe it contains ingredients like niacinamide, glycerin. Let's see what else is on here? Panthenol centella ceramides now this is a, a, a smaller sample size of the bright and healthy radiance line which you can find a few products i've seen them at target in the us but in asia there's a lot more selection from this line including the serum as well as a sheet mask i believe cleanser and moisturizer but this one is really cool because it's got antioxidants so it's got ethylated um, vitamin c along with niacinamide for brightening effects and then two products from userin that again not available in the US. This one's really interesting. It's an acne line that has anti um, acne ingredients, anti uh, sebum ingredients, and not in the sense that it can like permanently reduce your oil production, but can certainly mask and help to reduce shine, as well as ingredients to help with hyperpigmentation. I am really excited to try this one. And then just another sunscreen from Eucerin that, of course, with its filters is not available in the US. So lastly, this I was told by my Chinese dermatologist friend, this is a very popular brand in China and is a Chinese founded brand. So when Nona, and it's basically a brand founded in um, 20 plus years of research and using traditional herbal Chinese medicine ingredients in the formulation. And this line is really formulated for irritated, sensitive skin. So there's a selection of products, but in this packet, I believe I'm getting the see there's a sunscreen cream barrier cream and then an essence so essences and toners are huge in asia essences and toners i kind of think of um as like along a spectrum of similar um, idea and usage are really popular in asia and they're definitely a nice to have but not necessary and certainly with all the pr packages that i've gotten lately i definitely have been using more of them just for trying testing and it's really nice I think it's it does give your skincare the extra level of like feeling more luxurious like you're treating yourself more than just like oh I'm doing skincare for the bare necessity like you know I have to brush my teeth every day but they're not necessary but some essences literally can function like serums and have high concentrations of actives um, in addition providing skin hydration and softening the skin so that way the uh, next product that you put on is better absorbed because your skin will absorb ingredients and products more readily and more effectively when it's dampened than when it's dry. And if you live in Asia and have tried these products or just in general have used any of these that I've shared, please let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. I forgot to tell you guys, uh, speaking of SK2, I found that there is an SK2 spa by the hotel that I'm staying in. And so I had to book myself a facial. I am not a big facial person. In fact, I've only gotten two facials in my entire life. I actually do not enjoy people touching my face. I actually, that's like a pet peeve of mine. However, I booked myself a facial I think it's like an hour or an hour and a half they have different treatments but I was told that I can go in and talk about my concerns and they will select the best facial treatment of course I think what I'm mostly looking forward to is just the massage and the relaxation I'll let you guys know how that goes so I just got back from my facial at the SK2 boutique and definitely was an experience I know the times when I had facials in the US it was very like procedural extraction heavy and I felt like sometimes it just made my skin more sensitive produced more hyperpigmentation so that is one reason I don't really get a lot of facials and two I feel like what I seek in a facial are like the hydration component the masks and really just the feeling of being pampered, which I definitely got. There was definitely more technique with the facial, the massage element. And so this time was really interesting. I went in, they had me answer some questions and did a machine guide analysis of my skin and found that I have combination dry skin, which is what I've been telling you guys I have. Otherwise, my concerns were more, you know, fine lines, wrinkles, anti-aging, hyperpigmentation, a little bit of acne. Overall, I have very minimal hyperpigmentation aside from this one that is from my hormonal acne that I've been trying to get over for the past couple weeks with all the traveling and sleep deprivation. Otherwise, I have minimal fine lines, a little bit fine lines. My elasticity is good. But the other thing is that my skin is dehydrated, which I definitely feel as well. And then they recommended me the most popular facial. 
I, I forgot the name, but it was their 90 minute session that's the most popular. And I started off with a really nice double cleanse to remove everything, and then a machine guided exfoliation, gentle exfoliation. And it kind of felt like dermaplaning, but with a little machine. And I believe she told me it was like ultrasound guided exfoliation. And then came like an oil based massage on my face, neck, and then a hydrating mask. And she again used a heated, a lightly heated device that helped to increase the penetration of the ingredients. So that was really cool. And then afterwards finished off with the, the skin line, the products. So the toner, the moisturizer, and the sunscreen. Certainly my skin feels very hydrated. But yeah, I think facials are for me a, a nice treatment. Like I, I pamper myself once in a while, just like massage. But I definitely do not think that facials are necessary if you want good skincare. I think the one benefit facials offer is like instant skin hydration. So if you're like about to go to an event and you want your skin just to look glowy and hydrated and plump, I think facials are great for that. Hey guys, so I have officially been in Singapore for about a week and the World Congress of Dermatology Conference ended officially yesterday. And that meeting was just, it was wonderful to say the least. Gathering of dermatologists from across the world, thousands of dermatologists, it was really fun. Really fun to be able to meet dermatologists. You know, when I go to the American Academy of Dermatology Conference, it's mostly US dermatologists. Definitely we still have few internationals, but this is legitimately a melting pot of you know, individuals from around the world. So I think that really is the highlight, being able to meet new dermatologists and then just to see like the different formulations that exist from very common brands that we have in the US, like Olay, CeraVe, Vichy, La Roche-Posay, Eucerin, Cetaphil, but just the products that are available internationally and particularly Asia that are not available in the US. And you know, I, I there are particular products are especially formulated for just like the China audience, for example. So that's really cool to see. So, but today I wanna show you guys because I, I don't know if you guys can tell, I got a haircut. <laughs> so I feel like when I'm in Asia, I have to get a haircut. Where I live, there aren't that many great Asian stylists and I'm very partial to Asian stylists because, you know, being Asian myself, I've had a mix of experiences when I go to different salons in where I live in particular. And so I really gravitate towards Asian stylists, um, particular Korean stylists, because I really like the way they style and cut hair. And so in Singapore, I had to, that was one of my priorities, book a haircut. So I found a salon that was highly rated on on Google before I did some research before coming here and it's called Bada Salon it's a Korean K-beauty salon David who um, cut my hair actually even did some work with um, entertainers so k-pop artists from SM entertainment and then I also booked myself a scalp treatment just because I was very curious what that involved and so my experience going to salon was it started with the scalp treatment so David's assistant applied this cleanser onto my scalp and basically afterwards as that cleanser worked it's almost like in my mind I think when I was talking to her trying to get an idea of exactly what it was it sounded like a clarifying mask and slash shampoo because that was left on for a good 15 minutes so she applied that and then did this amazing head massage for like five minutes and then I was put under a steamer this steamer is very interesting it's not heat it's actually just water steam very soothing and the whole time my scalp felt cool yeah it was just a very relaxing experience so that kind of did the first layer of a cleansing exfoliation and then came the shampoo and then of course with the shampoo there was definitely some amazing massage action happening as well and then a scalp mask that was left on for about another five to ten minutes and legitimately I, I think I took a nap <laughs> during that time and then afterwards it was rinsed off um, and then the end were conditioned and then I had my hair cut it was really interesting because he kind of did a preliminary just like chop to kind of get the length and then before he blew dry my hair to actually do the styling component of the cut spray on tonic was applied to the hair and this is a line from Shishido that helps with hair thinning I have to look into the ingredients because I'm really into scalp tonics and serums these days I think it can really provide a lot of benefit to support scalp health to encourage hair growth and then blue dry my hair and cut my hair and like this guy is really creative he he's got skills and then afterwards he styled it and of course like it's so humid here it just thunderstormed walking outside I feel like it ready kind of have like felt flat but he actually blew dried the roots and I actually for like a good five to ten minutes had amazing volume hey guys 
Uh, it is morning here in Singapore. It's actually my last day here and I'm about to do my morning skincare routine. So I thought I would chit chat while I'm getting ready. Now the past week, my husband actually has been here. He joined me about five days ago and literally the two of us without the kids for the first time in years, we've been doing some traveling, mostly around Singapore, doing lots of eating and sightseeing. So I wanna talk with you guys about what we've been doing and also some really interesting, unique, Asian skincare finds and pharmacies that I bumped into while going into their pharmacy throughout the time here. So when he arrived, basically we just tried all the hawker stalls. The first one we went to was the famous Max Bar one. Had the Tian Tian Hainan chicken, which was amazing. And then this delicious bowl of kanji that literally, I think it's the best I've ever had. It had a mixture of pork, fish, and then the kind of black thousand year eggs. I mean, if you know Chinese kanji, you know what I'm talking about. But there's something about the rice. I think the way they cook kanji here, legit kanji, the rice is broken up and it's very creamy, very thick. And so that I think is what makes it delicious aside from the broth. So that's kind of what we did the first day. Kind of just walked around and then met up with uh, my friend Joyce, Dr. Park from Tea with MD. We actually then had chili crab. So literally Monday was just a full day of eating. So I'm gonna just go in with the Cetaphil gentle cleanser and i love the fact that because it foams you can actually use this as a face wash and what i actually have been doing at home is also using it as a hand wash i find that it to be much more gentle especially during the winter time when i'm washing my hands like 10 times throughout the day it won't make your hand get really dry and cracked okay so the first step after cleansing is always for me in the morning a vitamin c serum and i just happen to have a small bottle of floritin cf from skin Suticals. i brought this one because number one it's so hot and humid here that i like floritin cf better than c ferulic a lot of people tend to like like a lighter serum for the summer then i'm gonna go in with my big bottle mineral 89 i brought this on the pear strip and that was literally like a few, few days before coming here and i just wanted to use this up again it's a nice hydrating serum and i find that you know in singapore it's really funny because even though it's so hot and humid you're constantly going from inside to outside and so you're constantly going from like hot humid weather to really cool dry air conditioning weather and i actually find that my skin gets more easily dehydrated and that situation than if i were in a constant environment so i really like the hydrating serum and then like a you know like a nice moisturizer on top of that to prevent the dehydration second day we checked out like chinatown um it's like within like less than half a mile from where at the hotel that we stayed at checked out so many different stalls there we've had like the famous michelin star soy sauce chicken another amazing stall that had kanji fish ball soup crayfish and um grilled fish i mean Literally, the food scene goes on and on. I mean, I felt like our morning routine has been get up, literally eat like two breakfasts because we are up usually around six to seven and then get out really around nine, walk to the like hawker stalls and the, by that time kind of mosey around. My husband also is really into coffee. So we try to find a fancy coffee place that roasts our own coffee. And so by the time we actually make it into a, like Chinatown or hawker stall, it's already like 10, 30, 11, have a second <laughs> lunch until like noon and then we kind of will do activities in the afternoon it's like we eat we walk we eat and we walk we also had the famous like herbal soup this fish ma which i guess is like fish bladder supposedly here in asia it's been touted to have is rich in collagen okay after my serum i'm going to just use a little bit of cell acid i still have a little bit of residual acne here so this is just one from the inky list it's their succinic acid that also has a little bit of cell acid and i literally with these treatments i kind of just apply where i need to you can certainly apply it the whole face but i find that to be very irritating and so i usually am able to tolerate with this one percent sal acid here spot treatment so and then aside from the food the things that we've done here because it has been raining it's rained like pretty hard for two days two out of the five days that we've been here so one day we had to make last minute changes we wanted to actually take a day trip to malaysia but i don't think that's going to happen so we ended up at the um, singapore national museum and it was really cool learning the actual history of singapore as I'm not very familiar with just the history. I actually also took this eight mile hike at a famous park called the MacRitchie Reserve Park. And it was just really beautiful. It feels like you're walking through a tropical jungle. Like it's my closest, you know, experience 
to like, you know, going through like the rainforest, except for there are like no bugs, no mosquitoes. Like there are no mosquitoes here in Singapore. So that is really nice. And also monkeys, like literally I'm just walking down the path, hiking. And then there is like a group of monkeys are just in front of you walking towards you. They're not afraid of humans and they don't encourage you. They don't want you to feed the monkeys. Certainly they're just chilling. Yesterday we went to Sentosa. It was raining all day. So didn't get to do much, but definitely walked around, hiked a little bit, took the cable car, got beautiful views of of um, the city. I think it would have been better if it was not rainy and cloudy, but also walked around a little on the beach. Today, we're actually probably gonna just take a morning, relax, eat, and then pack a little bit. But this afternoon, we're actually gonna go back to a different side of Sentosa Island. My husband really wanted to do this kayaking and fishing tour. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's talk about the skincare stuff here in Asian pharmacies, it's really cool. So the two big pharmacies they have is called Watson. And I believe that's a Chinese branch because I've seen it in Beijing when I traveled years ago. And then Guardian, they actually import American brands too. Like I see Vichy, I've seen La Roche-Posay, but they're a lot more expensive, oh my God. The, the cost here is insane. But what is really interesting is that many of these brands have kind of the, some of the core things that we have in the US. For example, the La Roche-Posay, you know, Tularian Moisturizer, the Hydro Boost from Neutrogena, the Retinol. But they also have a lot more different products that are not available in the US that are especially formulated from these bigger brands for the Asian market. Going through the pharmacy, aside from a lot of the European brands, what struck out to me, number one, is cream products, which, you know, I expect that, but also like brands like Nivea and Vaseline has a pretty big market here for body care. And what is really interesting is they have a lot of brightening products. So body moisturizers with SPF, but also like vitamin C, niacinamide, and glutathione, which topically has been shown to help with hyperpigmentation as well as underarm care Nivea I see a whole line that has like antiperspirants deodorants roll-on as well as sprays that have vitamin C and niacinamide I'm just going with my moisturizer before I forget and it's naturium 5% gel cream and it's very very appropriate for the weather here and then hair care is very interesting they have a lot of European brands again some um, German brands and then you know aside from just the normal cleansing hair loss of course is huge everywhere what is fascinating is number one, Rogaine here, I, I have frequently found it as the brand Regain. And what is available in the strength of Rogaine Minoxidil is 2%, 3%, and 5%. And then they have a lot of um, products, mostly from Japan and Korea, that are geared towards hair loss. A lot of hair serums with like herbs like ginseng that in Korea have been shown to at least uh, in laboratory studies help with hair growth and the other thing too is I've seen is like really cool nifty like balms for like chapped heels and then of course a lot of different masks and masks for like dry cracked hands and masks for you know dry cracked feet all right so the last thing I'm gonna put on is my sunscreen I just want to show you guys I know I talked about this but god if you have a chance to try this sunscreen from Isanox this is uh, SPF 50 PA 4 plus and it's water resistant it's so lovely I think when I get back I'm gonna do a review of all the Asian sunscreen that are water resistant great for summer but yeah this one is like a light gel cream it's super lightweight but very very hydrating in a good way and so like I think this is suitable for like most skin types and despite how hot and humid it's been in Singapore I don't find this to be sticky I mean, it's not mattifying it definitely has a dewy finish but like just look at that like it's very it blends in very nicely it's got nice filters and I find that it's really hard to find water resistant Korean sunscreens yeah that has been the highlight of my trip here in Singapore let me know in comments below if you have tried any of the products that I talked about and also any other food recommendations that I should save for next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.